Well, hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, you should let me know how your day is going below. And if it's not going so well, I highly recommend saying this affirmation with me that today is a great day because I make it that way. Claim it, boo. Claim it. Claim that great day. Okay. And the reason why I make it that way is because making the conscious choice that happiness is a choice and that how we feel is ultimately a choice because feelings are like waves and we decide which waves we want to surf. So when we, we say that today is going to be a great day, we've not only one claimed it, two, we've established that happiness is what we want to feel today and thus... When we say that I am going to make it that way, solidifying that it is one's responsibility to have a great day. <laughs> all right, so done with all that. <laughs> now, today I wanted to talk about soul commutes. Um, Because ultimately, if there's one thing that my journey um, has definitely taught me about is soul communes, which are soulmates. Um, I prefer not to use that word because I feel like it's so limited in its actuality of what these whole this whole concept is. Um, and with that being said. Um, first I want to get into back in when metaphysics first became a thing in human history, which was back in Aristotle era. And granted, it wasn't necessarily of a science, but in that era, there wasn't necessarily religion either, but humans believed that we were to live our lives to our experiences and that each individual life had something to teach us on an individual level for our own life experience. And when we had learned whatever that was, then it is our duty. It was kind of like a custom um, to, to teach the other people. Um, and if there's anything of my journey, it is of soul communes. <laughs> so with that being said, um, I have had hundreds of hundreds of soul communes since I've had my awakening seven years ago. Um, there isn't a soul that doesn't cross my path that I interact with at this point that isn't a soul commune in one form or another. Um, in other videos, um, if you guys really want to know, um, let me know below and I will go more in depth. Um, I don't have the intentions to talk about specifically my story. Um, but I would gladly do so if people are interested in hearing about it. Um, beyond that, so I just think all these, these soulmate things, these twin flame things, they're, they're just so, it's like a ball. Okay? <laughs> it's just so limited. And I think it's really unhealthy. And that's why I have this strong sense of urgency and this sense of duty to talk about it. All right, so... About four minutes in and we'll get to meat of everything so in my experience one thing that I can say for a fact is the more one you are with yourself the more soul communes you're going to have it is directly linked to oneness um, within sorry um, had to get the cat out of the way but um so yeah like some people may have one or two soulmates okay um oh, and I only say this in retrospect because there are several people who think that I am their soulmate and I I have this unconditional maternal love for everybody in my life okay so when I say I love you guys I mean it all right but with the high velocity of soul communes that I've experienced, I can tell the difference of just, just where they are. So, rumor has it we have 
thousands, some people will say hundreds of thousands of soul communes so that we don't feel lonely in this lifetime. So, now, we're getting to theoretical things here. The concept of a soul family, like when a soul is created, alright? And I tend to think of a soul family as like a song. And each second of that song is a member of a soul family. So what makes a soul family? It's, in essence, everyone's frequency, because it's a song, has the same kind of template. Alright, think of like, like the beat, for an example. I mean, like, in each second of that beat, okay, but they're, they're connected by, by that song itself. Alright, now I could get really intricate as in like, like, there's a soul group here, there's one here, and then there's one here. So, like, this one in the middle here is going to have a soul family members, depending on how much you experience in a lifetime. You'll experience a soul communes from where they overlap from the other groups, soul groups that were created before or after yours. Um, now, that, that's a little bit on the batch of crazy land level of... Um, understanding, but I hope as this journey progresses, um, that I will be able to fully give a comprehension of what it is that life has <laughs> unsolicitedly taught me. <laughs> okay. And the whole reason why I have the sense of duty to share about this is because I would not wish my spiritual journey on the most vile human being ever. Um, being a cancer and woman, without having an emotional support system as a family, or even a bunch of friends for that matter, and then having all these soul communes, it was not only toxic in itself, but utmost confusing. <sighs> and it's just not something that I can, with my experience, not speak up on. Okay. So... Getting into, you know, so we don't, we, we don't feel lonely. Let's get in the concept of, you know, like a soul commune being a family. All right. Now, it is said, and it is true, that where it comes to the soul communes, there is this, like, magnetic attraction um, that's pulled towards, towards the other. Um, and a lot of these instances tend to be karmic. Now, and I don't want people to think of soul communes in a bad way, um... What's got me through life is the concept, the philosophy that people are either lessons or blessings in your life. So I strongly tried to find if there was a lesson to be learned with an individual to see if they were to stay in my life or not. Now, there are some closer soul siblings of mine that we have had exponential karma without a doubt, but we're able to be healed through that karma and we're able to be able to be good friends in this lifetime and have the just moved on from whatever crazy kind of karma that there was okay and with that being said now think of like your family your family in general as we know it here is who takes care of us who looks out for our best interest who really knows us all right so if you think that on a soul level all right when we have these karmic instances because a lot of people want to talk about karmics Okay, I, I do strongly believe that karmic, for the most part, the vast majority, are parts of your soul family, um, in my experience. Now, with that being said, and putting into the retrospect how we understand family, how families work today, on a soul level, our, our soul siblings are going to bring about certain karmic situations so that they can catalyze and domino effect some accelerated soul growth because that's the that's the purpose of having the experience in in the physical is to have that catalyst to have this accelerated soul development now something that's very interesting and for those who are parts of, excuse me let, me, let me reword that. For those who have had several encounters of soul communes, um, let me know below if, if this is true for you. Because, I mean, I have read this online and I have experienced it plain as day um, throughout all these years. And I tend to keep a very, 
I'm going to be the most social creature and I'm not great at upkeeping uh, communication, but I definitely do keep an eye over the people who I've had soul communes with and I, I check on them. That's just part of my cancer in nature. So now where it comes to a soul family, as one learns a karmic lesson, as one grows, it begins to domino in fact into the whole soul group. And it's actually really interesting to watch. Um, <laughs> and something that I found is that whoever's like like the totem, okay, because everyone's got their own little totems of different things, and I can get really intricate in all this, but that is not what this video is here for. This is like a basic introductory level of, of understanding. But so whoever's like a totem um, for a lesson, right? It might have taken them, we'll say like, for an example, like three years. Three years to learn this. Well, the next one, who's going to be kind of like in the closest in frequency, which has to do with like, also of like where their, their emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual bodies are, and whatever this issue is, all right? Whatever matches up closest out of the soul group, all right? It doesn't have to be like who's next in line and frequency to you. It's whose frequency is closest in dealing with the same exact issue. And once they get hit, it's going to take them maybe like a year and a half to get this. And then the next one, it's going to take, we'll say like eight months. And that's the really interesting thing is, is how they develop in, in this manner of <laughs> how, how, how we're all connected. And you now I say these things in, in the concept, like I don't adhere to any models. I only understand life by how I have experienced my life, which has been very vast. Um, and I believe in, in essentially in everything and nothing simultaneously. And I have a, a strong core. If there was a core of a model is that we're all connected and that we're all one. Um, with that being said, that there is, like I said, this is like, a, like an entry level of this conversation here. And with that being said, you know, as I'm talking about these different soul groups, these different soul groups, in reality, they're actually one giant whole soul group. And it's, it's, it's a lot of very intricate math that, um, if <laughs> my story didn't take me to having all of my stuff thrown away, I had a suitcase, um, of all my little notes and diagrams and from my channels and where I was creating a mathematical concept to this. But, um, yeah, so basically, that's that's all I got for now. <laughs> um, if there's anything you guys want me to elaborate on, please let me know in the comments, all right? And if this is something you can relate to, or if you're someone who has had multiple soul communes because there's not a lot of support for people like that, and I only know from my own experience, there are far and few and not... Mm, it depends on which community you're in. <laughs> you get like one or two. Um, either people don't want to admit and talk about it because it kind of contradicts, we'll say like, like even like the twin flame concept, like specifically, like it, it contradicts that. But then you have other people who preach it, but they're far and few. And everyone in our communities tends to think that we're lunatics <laughs> when, when in reality it's, it's not an easy road. Um, but I do believe that this is the next paradigm, um, for understanding soul communes on a soul level. And I do strongly feel like we need to address the fact that soul communes tend to always have a very strong sexual att attraction, despite even if they're like of the same sex and if they're like, it doesn't matter what anyone's sexual interests are. Um, and what the other party is to them. There, I, my theory, and I strongly do feel this way, is that the human body doesn't know how else to, to comprehend this soul excitement, except that it gets us sexually aroused. And I think, let me think, I, I know that if we make this knowledge, because it is inevitably true, more common than a lot of people in our communities and who are having these experiences would be alleviated of less heartache 
because I know from my own experience from instantly connecting with some of these people in the past because of these feelings, because of this, it just, now with what I know now, things could have been avoided. People hearts wouldn't have gotten hurt, you know, and I do believe strongly that everything happens within its own divine right time, but I also do strongly believe that the world is changing, and that the human consciousness, the collective consciousness, its development is exponentially been accelerating in its growth and its development, and it is time for us to, to move to a new level of of understanding all right guys so i'm that's all i got for now <laughs> all right um i hope you have a great day bye